that, how beautiful was that? You know, um, I want to say good morning to the Link Church. Good morning to everyone, wherever you're joining us from, on Link TV, on Facebook, on YouTube. A very good morning to you. Do you know what happened when I landed in Durban and I landed, I came to Pastor Dill and Tessa's house. I didn't even get a chance to put my bag in the room. I was invited to a studio. They've <laughs> they've converted part of their house, their garage into a studio. It's the time for new things. And uh, let me tell you, within the first 10 seconds of hearing one of the songs, privileges, ne? hearing one of the songs, the first thing that I heard was the drum. <laughs> and the first words that came out of my mouth was, this is for us. And what I mean by us, I mean Africa. This is our sound, this is our song, this is our anthem, and this is our time. So um, they, my friends don't know I'm gonna do this, but I wanna invite you as you, you know, lean in after you heard that and you see it, I wanna invite you actually to participate because it's ours, I want us to own it. I'm talking about sowing, I know I'm going to sow a financial contribution because it's ours, I want us to own it. The world's gonna hear it, but we need to just be part of it in every way. I'm gonna invite you to partner financially, I'm gonna invite you to pray over this, this project, this anthem, this gift that we are caring for the world. I'm gonna invite you to pray for the team, these guys. It is incredible, man, I'm so excited. It represents who we are. It represents God's heart for us. And so, yeah, whatever God is doing in this season, man, I wanna be part of it. And it's a good day, <laughs> it's a good day. Amen, so I've already greeted you. It is my, it's my absolute delight. It's my absolute delight to be here in this house. It's my absolute delight to share around the word with you. I don't know if you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, this fact that when you belong to a family, when you are part of a family, you have access to family information. You have access to family secrets. You have access to family plans, family things special things and because I'm part of the family here. I'm a sister here, I'm a mom, I'm a, you know, uh, a mom too, where's Dawn? Dawn was here. I am family and so because I'm part of the family, I happen to know that God has been speaking the weeks leading up to this moment. God's been speaking, we've been spending time sharing around some principles, some practices that we, some expressions, some things we can learn, not for a Sunday or Monday or week or just a season, but for life. We've been talking about, we put language around what we've been preparing and gifting and equipping you with. We've, we've been saying, hold on, I still got hope. So I came from Cape Town with that knowledge because I'm part of the family, having access to family things. I know we've been saying, hold on, I still got hope. This is what we did when we opened this series. I know Pastor Mark shared a beautiful scripture, which I want to read for you right where you're at home. If you wanna grab your, your Bible or your notebook, whatever you have, your phone in your hand, we're gonna read out of the first letter. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 4 through to 8. I'm going to read out of the message, paraphrase of the Bible this morning. Praise the Lord. It says, but friends, you're not in the dark. So how could you be taken off guard by any of this? You're sons of light, daughters of day. We live under wide open skies and know where we stand. So let's not sleepwalk through life like others. Let's keep our eyes open and be smart. People sleep at night and get drunk at night, but not us. Since we creatures of day, let's act like it. Walk out into the daylight, sober, dressed up in faith, love, and the hope 
of salvation. Come on, let's pray for the word this morning. God, we thank you for such a beautiful reminder. Lord, even the words that we've just written, what pops up for me is that we are sons and daughters. That already speaks to relationship. That already speaks to who we are. So I pray, Lord, everyone listening, Lord, to the word today, that this word is for them. We thank you. We declare that this word is for them. This word is for me. This word is for us. And so we thank you that there is no anxiety in this moment. There's just freedom to receive God's best from heaven as I speak today. These words are anointed. We thank you that God, your word has never been spoken and returned void. It always accomplishes that which you sent it forth. And so we agree together in this moment and say, Amen. Come on, drop an amen in the comment section. Come on, caps lock, big letters, um, add an emoticon and agree and say, let it be. Let it be. These few verses are so beautiful to me. Um, they represent Paul's closing remarks. He's writing to a Christian community in Thessalonica. You know, although Paul has been encouraged by their faith, by their hope, by the love, by the love they have in their hearts, he knows, he's aware, he's mindful of their vulnerability. So he's, he's writing a few more words to encourage them to just spur on and build up their spiritual muscle, which has been done actually the weeks leading up to this moment. So my job this morning is very easy. I'm coming to add to what has already been done. I'm coming to add and build your spiritual muscle. I'm coming to build your faith and help you stay faithful in your journey. I'm coming here to encourage you, family. And so I've titled this part of what you've been receiving under Hold On, I Still Got Hope. I've titled this segment, Who We Know Is Bigger Than what we feel. That's the title of the message. Who we know is bigger than what we feel. Please, um, I'm going to put a disclaimer and just arrest a thought um, right at the beginning that what, we, uh, what I'm not saying in this moment is your feelings are irrelevant. No, I'm not saying that today. No. In fact, if you're listening and you're feeling pain or you're feeling disappointment, I would say don't ignore that, that pain. I would say that that pain is an indication that something needs to happen, that you need to take an action, that that pain is an indicator that something Something else is about to happen. I don't know if you were um, at here, like around when um, Pastor Dabs and, and uh, Dill were speaking, they mentioned that it is my birthday. You know, before I was birthed, that uh, I'm told, yes, I'm told at quarter to eight in the morning, mommy felt some pain and she gave her last push and um, I took some. So, what I'm not saying in this moment is, I'm not saying ignore your feelings. I'm not saying that God did not make robots. He made us humans and he intentionally so. What I'm saying is that who we know is bigger than what we may feel. So number one, as we take notes today so that we can reflect later over a cup of tea or coffee, we may feel hopeless, but we know we have hope. Hope is not something that we are, you know, like making a wish that we will access one day. We already have it. Our hope is Jesus. Church, our hope is Jesus. Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty and you have access to him today. Notice out of the scripture that we wrote, there is reference to sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. We live in a time where I feel it's necessary to remind us who we are, whose we are. So you have access to hope. You may feel hopeless, but I want to remind you this morning that you have hope. We may feel hopeless, but we know we have hope. You say, but Nande, you don't know my story. You don't know what is happening in my life. Maybe you are saying kutri kiku wow kutens in this moment. But he, even Jesus said in John 16, 30, 
33, that I've told you these things so that you may know and have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This is Jesus himself saying that you may feel hopeless, but I'm here. You have access to hope in this time. That's the first thing that I want to remind you of this morning. And the second thing that I want to remind you is that you may feel helpless, but we know we have a helper. Yes, we have our hope, who is Jesus. But we also have a helper, the Holy Spirit. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, it says, But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Church family, putting on things, walking out love and guarding our hearts from offense in these times. You know, when we're working and we're changing the world and we're producing EPs and we're writing books and we're creating art for the world, when we're doing things for the Lord and He's equipped us for it, you know, things can happen in our, in our hearts, but He's encouraging us to put up a breastplate of love for that work. You need a helper. You need the, the Holy Spirit. And uh, the good news is that he is here, Romans 8, 26, it says, and in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times where we don't even know how to pray, where we don't even know what to utter, he knows the best things that we could ever ask for. The Holy Spirit rises up within us and super intercedes on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs, so deep words cannot express. You may feel hopeless, but you have hope. <laughs> you have Jesus. You may feel helpless. You may be looking at your situation and you're just saying maybe, I know Jesus is with me, but how? Like I actually need to action out some things. I need to work out some things. I need to figure out some things. You have the Holy Spirit. You have a helper. You may feel helpless. In fact, I want to encourage us not to wait till we feel empowered. Don't wait for that moment. Don't wait to feel empowered. Don't wait to feel strong. Don't wait to feel capable. Ask Holy Spirit for help. Because who we know is bigger than what we, what we feel. And what I want to tell you is... <laughs> What I know of disappointment, you know, it's an interesting thing that happened this year. At the start of the year, I knew it. it's not just the start of the year, it's the start of a decade. Sure, I was busy there with my plans, writing down my plans. Oh, so amazing, great plans. Uh, February, sure, written the vision down, made it plain. Amazing. March, it's nice, school it. It's nice to be here. This you know, new decade. We're here. We're here. And then, you know, lockdown, COVID. And I, this is, I'm going to be very honest in this moment. I felt the Lord took my plans and he sort of tore them apart in front of me. I was watching. I was wide awake. That's how it felt. And how many know that that's not necessarily a bad thing because you don't want your plans. I don't want, now in this moment, I'm saying, actually, I don't want my plans. My plans were too small. My plans were just, you know, about me. I'm grateful that it's not about my plans anymore, but about His plans in the name of Jesus and His plans. His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are greater than my thoughts. So... That's a good thing that happened. I thought I'd just sneak that in here. But I, what I know of disappointment, it wasn't necessarily um, what happened in this, in this year. It's some of the things that didn't happen as planned. But So what I know of disappointment and what I know of pain is that, um, or feeling hopelessness or helplessness, is that it can sometimes blur your vision. Real talk, you are born again, you are saved, you are Holy Ghost full, you love the Lord, you're part of team, you're a pastor, you're, you're a great man, woman of God, you're a son and daughter, but there are moments where pain or disappointment can cause a little bit of interesting things in your vision. 
So it's possible that you, you may not see clearly. But my third point and encouragement today to us is that God sees you. You may not see clearly, but God sees you. He not only sees you, but He sees your situation. He not only sees your present situation, your past, but He sees your future. I don't know about you, but I'm glad we have a God. We have this hope. We have this God who sees, sees behind us, sees all around us and sees before us. And so I want to encourage some people. I think this is a word for someone here today. You've been so stressed stressed out. You've been in such a panic. You've been saying to yourself, I don't want to miss God. I don't want to miss God. I want to I want to experience God. I want to hear from God. He's been saying, I don't want to miss God. And the Holy Spirit is saying to us, you, even me, I'm encouraged by this, even in this moment. He's saying, baby, there's no way that you can miss me. My eye is on you. My eyes are on you. You will notice when I was speaking, I was speaking about knowing. I said, who you know. If you're writing that in your, in your book, write know in big letters. Who you know is bigger than what you feel. You may feel hopeless, but you know you have a helper. It's in the knowing. And um, so be still and know that he is God. Some knowing, some knowing is not pursued, but just freely received. And for that, we need to be still. We need to come into his presence and say, Almost like jump on God's lap and say, Daddy, here I am. Here I am. Talk to me. You never miss a thing. Say, Daddy, I'm here for it. Those are the things that I want to remind you of. And because I've reminded you of something gold, you actually have a responsibility. I'm going to give you three things that we now have a responsibility to do. But just quick recap. Number one, you may feel hopeless. But we know, we know, (laughs) we know. I have a five-year-old daughter. You know, her name is Tanaya. Tanaya may feel hungry, but she knows. It's not something she sort of, I don't know, has to, she knows there's food in the house because mommy's here. And what she does is she'll, she'll, she'll ask. And then as she's asking, she's actually walking towards the fridge, walking towards the cupboard. If it's higher, she knows to take a step ladder or something and step up and reach out and get because she knows. And so it's important to know in times of uncertainty, the children of God, sons of light, daughters of day can know and not give away their hope. They can hold on to it. We may feel hopeless, but we know we have hope. We may feel helpless, but we know we have a helper. And we may sometimes feel we can't see, but the good things we know we are seen. It's important to be seen by God. And so now that we know big things, that we have this big God, I want to exhort us to do three things. Now that you know you have hope and you have Jesus, tell the world. Number one, you have a responsibility to tell the world that Jesus lives. The world will receive much more information through statistics, through the news channels, through Twitter feeds, through hashtags. It is our responsibility as sons and daughters to tell the world that Jesus lives. I don't know how you are going to tell the world. Perhaps you're not necessarily going to be holding a mic and standing in front of a camera. Maybe you're going to be telling the world that Jesus lives by working out whatever you're working out in the business world in integrity and and excellence, you know, giving out your best, perhaps in your school, maybe even in your family. You need to tell your brothers and sisters, you need to tell them and show them that Jesus lives by waking up each and every day with a song, not pretending that everything is okay, but knowing that everything is more than okay, because greater is He that lives in us than the one that's in the world. It's all good. It works out for our good in Jesus' name, because in our family, in the kingdom of God, good plus good equals good. Good plus bad equals good. Bad 
plus bad equals good. It's always good because Jesus is in it and we have a responsibility to tell the world that Jesus lives. And the second responsibility that we ha have is to tell the world that help is available. We have the Holy Spirit. If you look around and if you pay attention, you will notice that people are hungry for the supernatural power of God because people have dreams. I believe that people who haven't even, you know, have had access to church environment have incredible, maybe you're sitting on your couch and you're in a coffee shop and you have your earphones on listening to this message. You're like, man, I have, a, I have this thing in my heart to do something. It may be in the political landscape. It may be in, you know, to do something towards our economy. You have this passion burning with inside of you. I believe that passion, that thing inside of you is the God dream. And God dreams because they so big. You can't do them on your own. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. So for us, it is our responsibility to tell people that your natural combined with the Holy Spirit super is a supernatural move of God. The things that we are going to do in this decade because our plans we've put aside and we've taken on the plan of God, the great and mighty plan of God, we need the Holy Spirit for. So we need to access the Holy Spirit for ourselves and build ourselves up in by speaking, you know, in the language of the Holy Spirit, by gathering and, and fellowshipping with, with other believers who are filled with the Holy Spirit as well. But we have a responsibility to tell the world you have access to power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes over you and you be His, his witnesses. All of us are meant to witness in whatever sphere we might find ourselves in. We don't need to have answers. We don't need to go out there and pretend we are God when people ask questions. But we can say we, have, we know someone who's all-knowing, who's omnipresent, present everywhere in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you might be. He's with you. We have a responsibility. I'm going to read out of First Thessalonians 5. Other verses, um, you know, at, towards the end, 13 to 15, I'm going to read it for you. Just receive as I read it. It says, get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. Our counsel is that you warn the freeloaders to get a move on. Gently encourage the stragglers and reach out for the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each other attentive to individual needs and be careful when you <laughs> this is in the Bible and be careful when you get on each other's nerves that you don't snap at each other of course this is not us it's just trolls <laughs> but look for the it says look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring it out the words that, that, that say be attentive be careful Look, and the third responsibility that we have as sons and daughters, now that we are seen, we have a responsibility to see. As you are busy carrying out your big God dream, I want to invite you to see people. First thing that happened that I immediately caught my attention when I heard the sound of that EP was the, the team just telling me, you know, we were collaborating with this. I was like, Man, I love this house. They're not just sitting here on a hill and somewhere beautiful in Balito, but they are seeing, they are attentive to other children in their family and they are drawing out the best in them and they are willing to collaborate. We are willing to do that. You see, when we know that our God is bigger, we see differently and we have a responsibility to see others. Hold on, I still got hope. This gives me hope that we are able to receive strength and not only receive strength for ourselves, but we are able to see strength in others. We are able to see potential in others. We are able to see opportunities in others, even in your family. Some of you are even going to be able to see opportunity in the spouse, the man that you live with, your husband, the wife that you live with in the house, your daughter, your son. You're going to see them in a different way and you're going to call out. You're going to call out that thing in them 
in the name of Jesus. Maybe even on social media, sometimes we can interact and reshare each other's stories. How about we begin to see each other and act like our Father he says, now that we know we need to act like who we are. You know, if our God sees, we have a responsibility to see in Jesus' name, see leadership potential in other people, see the creativity all around you. And I'm going to prophetically decree and declare right now that this word is for you. You are going to start to see in a different way. You know, when God is doing a new thing, the word says, see, it says, behold, it says, pay attention in the name of Jesus. We are a, a generation that is going to pay attention. We're going to see chaos, but not see chaos for what it is. We're going to see it as opportunity because we know who we are. We are sons and daughters, and that is what our God did in the beginning. It says the earth was formless. It was dark, and God spoke, and there was light. He saw, and the chaos for him was opportunity. As Daddy did, so will we in the name of Jesus. I know that light travels faster than sound, but for light to happen, someone needs to say something. Someone needs to speak and say, let there be light. If you are frustrated by something happening in your world, whatever it might be, I am encouraging you to start to speak in that situation and say, hold on, I still got hope. And the reason why I do is because I, I may feel a certain way, but I know the one who is bigger. Oh. Hey, do something. If you're sitting down, I'd like you to change positions. If you were sitting down receiving the word today, why don't you just get up and take steps around the... <laughs> <laughs> steps around wherever you are. If you were standing, why don't you kneel down, change positions. While we are doing this is we are actually doing a, a prophetic act just to say, God, I've heard your word. This is not just simple things that went in and out of my ear. You are wanting to respond. Just physically, just do something. And if, uh, if there's healing needed, you weren't able to move a hand or just test it out in the name of Jesus. Because we have hope, we have help, and we are seen in the name of Jesus. If uh, there's something that's been bothering you, you maybe want to write down. You don't want to be that crazy. You are in a room full of people. You don't want to, you know, be that. Just grab a piece of paper and write. Do something. Act of faith. And I believe God sees you and uh, he acknowledges you. And he's not just going to see and turn away. <laughs> he's going to see and do something in your life in the name of Jesus. This is our great God. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above whatever we ask, think, or even imagine. According to the power that is at work in you, you have Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, and you are seen. So start to see, my brother and sister, in Jesus' name, come on, agree with me. 